Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? If you are new here, my name is Danny Christine. I am a multi-site childcare business owner, consultant, and a digital content creator on childcaresites.com, where you can find resources for childcare professionals such as yourself, if you are just starting out in the childcare business industry, or if you've been in it for quite some time, like I have. There are plenty of things for you to take advantage of on childcaresites.com, so be sure to head on over there right after this video. I was inspired to make this video today based off of something that I experienced last week or I should say something that I learned about and because I have been bringing specific information like this to you since 2020, I realized I can't let this opportunity pass by without also bringing it to my subscribers. So if you are interested in learning more about the employee retention credit, please stick around because that's what this video is going to be all about. So as I just mentioned, since 2020, I have been bringing you different grant opportunities that I have become aware of that I know that I qualified for with my businesses. So I wanted to make sure you take advantage of it as well. And honestly, there were probably hundreds, if not thousands of different grants that you could have uh, taken advantage of if you wanted, but I really only spoke about the ones that I did the most research into and that I applied for or be, have been funded for. I, I don't spend my whole day just looking up grant information or doing a lot of research into how I can get funds for my business. I, I just don't, so I can't always cover everything for every state or every country. I get a lot of questions about different states and different countries under those videos that I have published in the past. Um, and while a few of them are applicable to wherever you may be in the US, just like this one is, so no matter where you are, stick around, most of the information that I get um, provided to me is applicable to the state of New York because that's where my childcare businesses are. So I apologize for everyone in other states or other countries that could not take advantage of the information that I was sharing um, on my platform about what my business could take advantage of. But this one is for you if you don't already know about it um, because I didn't until very recently. However, this opportunity has been around since 2020, so I'm kind of like kicking myself for not doing more research into it before. Anywho, the Employee Retention Credit, also known as ERC, I've also seen it referred to as Employee Retention Tax Credit, or ERTC. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, has been up and available since 2020, but from what I'm told, every time I talk to someone about it, it's not widely publicized as the Paycheck Protection Program or the, um, what does EIDL stand for? Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Those PPP and EIDL, those were everywhere. Everybody knew about them. But for some reason, this one, I don't think everybody knew about. And maybe like, maybe it's just me. Maybe you're watching this video like, come on, Danny, that's old. We already got that money. If you did, fantastic. I did not. Editing Danny jumping in here to say that I surveyed my Instagram followers right before beginning to edit this video and asked, did you know about the ERC? Um, and 100% of my Instagram followers said no. 100% of the people that answered the question said no. So as suspected, not many people knew about it. And uh, let me backtrack and say I did hear about it in 2020, but I didn't take advantage of it because I thought that I did not qualify. Come to find out, I do. So the reason that I thought that I did not qualify back in 2020, and maybe you're, you might be in the same predicament, is I thought that in order to qualify for the employee retention credit, actually, let me just tell you what it is before, before I get into a story. Okay. And I'm, yes, 
me to fact check and get my information right. So I'm reading directly from the IRS website. I'm sorry. I'll also put a blurb here and I'll leave the um, link in the description for how you can learn more about this. I'll leave the link for the IRS website. It says, what is the employee retention credit? The employee retention credit is a fully refundable tax credit for employers equal to 50% of qualified wages, including allocable qualified health plan expenses that eligible employers pay their employees. This employee retention credit applies to wages, applies to qualified wages paid after March 12, 2020 and before January 1st, 2021. The maximum amount of qualified wages taken into account with respect to each employee for all calendar quarters is $10,000. So that maximum credit for an employer for an eligible employer for qualified wages paid to an employee is $5,000. For some reason, that doesn't seem right to me. So okay, so it says the FAQ. So what I'm reading from the page that I'm reading from says these FAQs do not reflect the changes made by the Taxpayer Certainty and Disaster Tax Relief Act of 2020 enacted on December 27, 2020, the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 enacted on March 11, 2021. Blah, 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 blah. The Relief Act amended and extended the employee retention credit and the availability of certain advanced payments of the tax credits under Section 2301 of the CARES Act for the first and second calendar quarters of 2021. Okay, so that's that's why that didn't sound right. So they have included more quarters, I think, if not all, uh, of 2021. It says the Infrastructure Act terminated the employee retention credit for wages paid in the fourth quarter of 2021 for employers that are not recovery startup businesses. So what does all of this mean? <laughs> and please do not quote me. Please click on the links. <laughs> please click on the links in the description of this video because this is not my area of expertise. I'm just bringing these opportunities to you in the event that you can take advantage of it like I am trying to do for my businesses. So, but what I believe this means is that if you have retained your employees um, to a certain extent, I don't know the exact number or percentage of employees that you had to have retained over each quarter, but if you've retained your employees in some way, up to whatever qualifies you throughout 2020 and 2021, you could qualify for a certain dollar amount of money per each employee. And if you're a center-based provider, even if you're not, I mean, it's all relative. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that you could, that you've already, if you haven't taken advantage at this point, you've already paid money into that you are eligible to get back from the IRS for each quarter that you are eligible for it, right? So, Let's talk about eligibility for a second. I, like I mentioned, heard about this a couple in 2020, and I immediately brushed it off because what I thought, and maybe this is true, because I can't imagine just like assuming or not fully looking into it and then like saying, oh, whatever. I thought that you had to show a decline in gross receipts over comparing quarters. So like, what your revenue was in quarter one of 2019 compared to what your revenue was in quarter one of 2020 or quarter two 2019 compared to quarter two 2020. Like I believe you had to show a decline in what those amounts were. And honestly, my business did not show a decline over any quarter. We were we opened our first location in 2017. So we're fairly new still. It hasn't even been six years. Like I think technically maybe we just passed the passing the startup mode um, or startup label uh, when we hit our five year mark this year. So we've been growing. Our business has been growing. Um, and especially back in 2020, both when COVID hit, we didn't even 
we hadn't even made three years yet. So our business had been growing. So I was like, oh, we're not going to, this is not one that we can use or we can qualify for. So I stopped looking into it until really recent, until last week. <laughs> I'm in a, a lot of different uh, child care related communities and especially like Facebook groups and um, a Facebook group that I was in, someone posted a screenshot of this company that was basically promoting the fact that they help, um, they help uh, people. I think it was specifically that they help child care providers file for the um, ERC reimbursement or ERC refund is what I guess it's called if you haven't already taken advantage of it. Because back then, uh, in 2020, when it first came out, when you applied for it, I believe what was happening is if you got approved, then the it would be a credit, like, as, it, as is in the name, it would be a credit onto the tax and withholdings like that you pay out to your employees you would you would not have to pay that in your upcoming quarterly like tax bill like it would be removed so basically we're spending less on payroll expenses over time if i'm not mistaken please check fact check me correct me in the comments whatever so but now that has changed and i guess we can get into that in a second but the way that you're receiving this money is in a refund check, not a credit onto your bill. So this Facebook post was talking about how they can help child care providers with um, getting their employee retention credit refund. And um, it was trying to solicit people to use their business by making it simple of like, here's how you qualify. And it said, you know, show a decline in in revenue over a quarter and then there was another bullet that like flicked a light bulb in my head there was another bullet that said something like you must um or, or you can have government mandated suspension of your business something like that and when I read that I was like hold on a second because I need to look into this further so with that being said I did. <laughs> I went on the IRS website. I watched tons of YouTube videos. I will link one of the videos that I watched that really helped me understand this a little more because this, this video that I'm putting out here right now is really just to bring awareness to you that this is available and you might qualify. Look into it. Um, but the video that I watched that I will link below to someone else's channel really broke down um, like a lot of questions that I had in my mind, pretty much all of them, and gave me answers that I needed to know. So... Um, I went on to do my research and I found out that, yes, that is true. And I will read, going back to the IRS website, who is an eligible employer? And it has, in parentheses, updated November 16, 2020. So maybe I saw this information before November of 2020, and that's why I didn't do my research two years ago um, and kind of just brushed it off every time I heard about it since. But so it says eligible employers for the purposes of the employee retention credit are employers that carry on a trade or business during calendar year 2020, including tax exempt organizations that either fully or partially suspend operations during any calendar quarter in 2020 due to orders from an appropriate governmental authority limiting commerce, travel, or group meetings for commercial, social, religious, or other purposes due to COVID-19. That is the key part that now makes us eligible because while we did not, the second bullet says, experience a significant decline in gross receipts during the calendar quarter, we did not do that. Um, but it says, or, you know, the fully or partially suspend operations due to the government order. Yes, we did. Most, if not all, child care providers did. 
So there were times that, yes, we had to shut down for weeks at a time because someone tested positive for COVID, which might be the whole building or just a couple classrooms that's either fully or limited. And even if we never had to shut down, we did have to partially suspend operations or there was a, a reduction. There was limits placed on our business as far as the maximum um, class sizes back then. We had a class size of over 20 kids and had to bring it down to 10 children for some point in time. And then even after that, for a year after that, it was reduced to only 15 children. We couldn't, there, there was just, there was, I can't even, we've had pages and pages and pages of guidance documents and restrictions and limits on the way that we operate our business that really halted, put a halt to some things and also um, slowed down our growth tremendous, tremendously because we were, you know, in a fantastic place <laughs> right before COVID. And that really like, well, just as I'm sure, you know, a lot of people were, but our business had it with just reaching the three year mark. We were filled to capacity. Like it, it really slowed a lot of things down. So with that said, I started speaking to some experts. I started watching videos and reading more, looking up more information on the IRS website like you're going to do for yourself um, and determined that, yes, we can apply for this. So uh, in order to apply, what you would need to do at this point is basically amend, uh, if amend is the right word, uh, you would need to amend your 941s, which is a, if I'm not mistaken, it's a quarterly document that you or your accountant or your payroll processing company uh, files, and it tells the IRS exactly how many employees you have and um, the amount of money that you have spent on payroll. And I believe your the withholdings, like the taxes that go along with it, you would need to have that amended with Form 941X. Um, there are, this is something, again, if you uh, have a accountant or a payroll processing company, I'm not sure that your payroll processing company does this, but your accountant or your CPA should be able to. Um, and if you don't have either one of those things or your accountant or your CPA doesn't know, you know, or whatever, um, you can also utilize different companies or businesses that are assisting other businesses with this process, yes, you would pay a fee. It will, depending on who you go with, it will likely be a percentage of your, um, of the amount that you get as a refund. So it's, it can be pretty expensive. Um, but if you didn't know about it <laughs> and now you do, it's tons of, uh, free money, I guess, um, that, well, it's not necessarily free money. It's just unexpected funds that you can now get back that you've already paid. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to keep saying things like that, but if I'm not mistaken, this is unlike the PPP or the EIDL or those like state grants that you have, that you get, that you have to specifically use that money for payroll or rent or utilities or things like that. No, I think when you get this money, you can use it however you see fit or, you know, uh, have your business spend it however your business wants to spend it. If I'm not mistaken, because this is money that you already paid that you did not need to pay based on your business criteria and how you qualify. So it's just money given back to you. I'm just like, <laughs> and the reason that I'm so just, you know, excited about that this exists is because it, again, it, it can be a very significant amount of money based on how many employees you have and um, uh, how much you have paid over time uh, and especially if you haven't used the, this money or applied for it up until then, if I'm not mistaken, with the calculations that the different calculators that I've been finding online and like trying to plug in my information, um, 
it's 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 super helpful it's going to be very helpful for a lot of businesses that maybe did not know about it and know about it now so what i will do if you are interested is i will plug the calculator that i had been using for my own business down below or you could google it like erc calculator and there's different like like I think the one I was using was from Gusto, which I believe is a tax preparing agency or, or like a, you can do your taxes, kind of like um, H&R Block or I think, I don't know. I'll put the calculator down below if you're interested in trying to figure it out yourself as far as determining um, if you qualify uh, use one of the calculators and it should show you at least an, a good estimate. Uh, in order to use it, you're going to need like detailed information about every single one of your employees um, and how much you paid them each quarter in 2020 and 2021 um, uh, for, for each specific quarter, like what their total um, uh, total pay to each employee was. So you're going to want to go into your payroll records and pull those up. Um, if you use a uh, payroll processing company like Paychex or ADP, what you want to look for is your employee, employee earnings report um, in order to find that information and plug it into the calculator. And you will see exactly how much money you could potentially get back from this ERC refund. Um, and you can also apply for this if your business is relatively new. That's another thing that really blew my mind. With the PPP and the EIDL and the um, grants that were provided by most states, your business had to be in operation, I believe, typically in 2019, like the first or second quarter um, of 2019 at the earliest Again, if I'm not mistaken, I don't particularly remember all of the facts about the eligibility for every single grant that I've spoken about, but I do know that most of the time startups did not qualify. So for my second and especially my third location, I could not apply for pretty much any of those funds. So with that said, um, this one is it allows you to do so if your business was impacted in COVID, regardless of the fact that you started after COVID. So I don't know off the top of my head what the exact like cutoff date is, but I do know that I if, if I'm not mistaken, because I still don't have the approval yet or these funds yet, but the second and third location that we have, they are eligible, they do qualify, and we are in the process of applying. Um, and we opened the second one in 2020 and the third one in 2021. So um, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, they, and it would be considered recovery startup uh, from what the IRS website says. An important thing to note is uh, this last question on the page that I'm linking in the description of this video. It says, may an eligible employer receive both the employee retention credit and a paycheck protection program, PPP loan, that is authorized under the CARES Act? The answer to this question says no. An eligible employer may not receive the employee retention credit if the employee if the eligible employer receives a PPP loan that is authorized under the CARES Act, an eligible employer that receives a PPP loan should not claim employee retention credits. So this, I do know from the experts that I've been speaking with, has changed. Um, and when you click on the link in the description below, you'll see that a big you know, flag pops up that says, this page is not current. After speaking with the experts about it, um, more recently, new guidance or new eligibility criteria has released, and even if you have received the PPP loan, you can also get the ERC refund. It's just that you cannot apply. How do I put this? Oh, so basically, I, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> what they will be doing when determining your eligibility is removing the amount of money that you allocated your PPP funds to 
from the quarters um, and for the employees, they'll be removing those dollar amounts to determine how much your credit for that quarter should be. So if you got a, just out of you know simplicity, if you got a $100,000 PPP loan and your um, credit and your amount of money that you spent for the um, payroll for the quarter in which you received that PPP loan from was $150,000, but you got PPP funds that you claim you spend all that money on your payroll. Now that will, all that you have left that you had to pay for on your own was $50,000 out of the 150 because the PPP loan money came, you said you spent it all on payroll for that quarter, and now you only have 50000 left. So I guess that would be what is determined to be the amount of money that you're um, eligible for with the ERC, I think, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, really, as, as I already mentioned, this video is to bring awareness that this uh, money exists. You might be eligible to receive it, even if you do not show a decline in gross receipts. If your business was uh, ordered by gov the government, that could be federal, state, or local government, like the Department of Health or Licensing Agency, if they forced you to close for a certain period of time, um, if they placed limits on your business that impacted your revenue, you could be eligible for these funds and I just encourage you to speak to a local expert or do your own research and figure it out. Don't overlook the opportunity because I'm not sure how much longer um, it will be around. I think until next year, I think, but I don't know. So um, do your research. Click the links in the description and I hope that this video helps even just one other business out there like that one Facebook post helped me to even just look into this further. Now I have not, I'm not even, I'm not finished with my process of applying yet. Um, so I, if anything else is uncovered or if I learn more or get just, you know, get more familiar and more comfortable with talking about it, I'll come back and I'll update you guys. But as of right now, this is all the information I have that I'm willing to spend time on to share. Um, so look into it and don't let the opportunity pass you by. Um, collect what is owed to you, okay? Before I go, I do wanna just remind you that if you have a childcare business or if you're thinking about starting one, then childcaresites.com can help you out. Head on over there. The link is also in the description. And if you don't already, please follow me on Instagram at Danny Christine Consulting, also linked below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.